dear friend welcome back to my channel in this video lecture we are going to learn about the introduction to the python programming language the video series on python programming language is intended to the absolute beginner means the learner who does not know about the programming language so for those people these video lectures have been made coming to this particular video lecture you will be able to know what are the key terminology before learning any programming language what is python why python and what for python so before starting this particular video course we would like to know about a person who invented the python programming language in 1991 is guido one prasam to know about him you can visit his personal home page at the given url here now coming to key terminology so it is always to have a better understanding of key terms which will be used in a particular programming language and we can come to know that there are various terms that will keep coming into our mind such as syntax statements software hardware instructions and programming language compiled programming language interpreted programming language and many more words now we will see what actually each word is representing so the first one is instruction and the instruction is also called as a statement so basically which instructs the computer or the hardware what need to be carried out is called as instruction and program set of instructions to do a specific task is called as a program and writing those set of instructions to create a program is called programming programming language as we know to communicate with each other i am using a language as a medium english so now to communicate with the computers or hardware by the people who call as developers or programmers is called as the programming language so it is the language which will be used by the developers or programmers to communicate with the computers or hardware software the basic meaning of the software is that which is easily modifiable or changeable so if you write set of instructions to do a particular task right if you want to change anything later you can easily change or you can easily modify that one so in that sense we call that one as software as we know if we have numerous programs or complex programs together to create an application to the computers is called as a software coming to hardware the physical and visible components such as motherboards monitors laptops cpus hard disk mouse what not the physical and visible components generally called as hardware the meaning for hardware is that which cannot be easily changeable or modifiable if you want to bring any change in a particular mouse it is not that much easy changing a particular program so hence it is called as hardware coming to syntax set of rules we call as syntax if you look at the english language if you write anything you are going to write all the sentences by using the grammar so grammar is nothing but what the set of rules framed for the particular language in the same way when we are writing a computer program we have to follow certain rules and regulations so those things are called as syntax when you don't follow that syntax we get some errors those errors in the program are called as syntax error and coming to exception you wrote a program each statement or instruction in that program is syntactically correct but it throws the error 
when you are running the program. So during that, if you get any error, we call that one as exception. To see a particular example, divide by zero. Divide by zero is the best example to understand what actually the exception errors are. So here syntactically it is correct. To execute this particular thing, you need a numerator, you need a denominator, right? Now, when we try to divide a particular number by a zero, is it possible to get an answer for that? No, right? So these kind of things we call as exceptional errors or simply it is an error while running the program we get. Now, compiled and interpreted programming languages. So whatever the compilers that we have and the interpreters that we have, basically what they do is they take the human readable code and simply they convert into computer readable machine codes, right? So that is the basic duty done by the compilers and interpreters. Now we will see what actually a compiled programming is. Let us consider uh, this is written in Japanese and all this is about the ingredients required to make noodles. So let us consider this one as the source code, right? Now, the source code cannot be understood by the computer so that that will be compiled into the computer understandable code, right? So now we call this one as machine code. Right. So now, if it is converted into machine code, then it will be easy to computer to understand it and whatever it is there, it works as per the instructions in this particular code. Right. So once if you want to bring any changes in the source code, then that entire source code, the changed source code has to be again compiled. That means translated into the machine code again. Now you can see that here is the compiler. Now you are giving the source code to this so that the source code code will be converted into machine executable code by the compiler so that this particular computer or machine will understand this and gives the result. So here is a simple example. As we know, C is the compiled programming language. So we will be having the source code. The true form of the code that is written is the source code. Now it is given to the compiler so that it will be converted into machine code. And finally, we get the result. Coming to interpreted programming language, let us consider the same Japanese uh, dish and what are the ingredients required to make that, right? So again, this will be the source code. Now, the basic difference in case of interpreted programming language is that each line in the source code will be translated at that time, right? Each line will be translated, not at the all at the same time. If you look at in the previous case, right? So the entire source code in case of compiled programming language is converted into machine code. But in case of this interpreted programming language, each line in the source code will be translated or converted into machine code. One line at a time. One line at a time will be converted into machine understandable code. That is the basic difference between the compiled programming and interpreted programming. Now, here it is the compiler. So we are giving the source code. So here the Python code that we are giving here as Python is an interpreted programming language. So now the interpreter, now what will do? It will convert each line in the source code into machine understandable code so that the system will understand it and it gives the result finally. Now, what is problem solving? So we have to identify the problem and we have to find the solution and we have to express the solution. So all these together we call as problem solving.
And what is high level language? Basically, the high level language is designed to be easy for humans to read and write. So that particular language we call as high level language. And what is low level language? Simply the programming language, which is designed to be easy for computers to execute. So keeping the machines in our mind, and if we develop any programming language to communicate with them, we call that one as low level programming language. And here, algorithm. So what is an algorithm? A step-by-step -step approach to get the solution for the given problem is called as an algorithm. Now, what is bug? So bug is an error in a particular program. What is debugging? So the process of finding as well as removing the programming errors called as debugging. What is basically source code? Whatever the true form that we have written to the computers, we call that one as source code. So simply the source codes are the high level programming code. Now let us see uh, the key terms which basically comes in the program. So let us consider here a small program and this particular program is to find even and odd numbers by using Python. Each line you can see this is line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4, line 5, line 6. There are 6 lines. Each line we can consider apart from this is an instruction. Each line will be called as an instruction. Right? So here this will be one instruction, this will be one instruction, this will be one instruction. Each line will be called as instruction. Right? If any thing or line is started with hash, any line which is intended or given with an hash symbol at the beginning, right? We call that one as commenting. And here it is only for single line. So it, it will be called as single line comment. So when this hash symbol is given so that that particular line cannot be executed, it will be ignored. Now, if you look at here, so here is uh, a number. A string is given here. Collection of uh, characters is called as a string. So for this, after the string, there is an equivalent operator. Later, something we have written. So this particular equivalent, uh, this particular single equivalent operator is called as assignment operator. If you want to assign anything to uh, anything to a particular variable, we will be using this assignment operator. To the assignment operator, uh, to the left of the assignment operator, we call that particular thing as variable. We will see what actually a variable, what are the uh, things that we need to follow while defining a variable, everything we will see. Now, here, whatever uh, the thing that you are going to provide for this particular variable, that will be called as a value. Now, here also we have used one hash and you wrote something. So for any particular instruction, if you mention like this, we call that one as inline comment. So this particular thing will be executed and this will be ignored. So when you write a particular program, if you look at this particular inline comment, you come to know that this particular entire line is used for reading the input. So that is the beauty of inline comment. Now, so you have used here conditional statement so that is if, if number modulus operator to equals to equals to zero. So here this double equivalent symbol will be called as equivalent operator or re relational operator. Single equal is called as assignment operator. Double equivalent is called as equal operator or relational operator. So when we use the equal operator, basically it is going to give uh, the boolean values so true or false like that it is going to give us right so after if we have used four spaces here we have left four spaces leaving four steps or four spaces after if called as indentation in the program 
if you leave four spaces, then we call that one as indentation. So if you miss this particular four spaces under if, then we get an error. That error is called as indentation error. So whenever you come across indentation error, that means immediately you have to go that to that particular line and you have to give the spaces so that that particular error will be overcome, right? Now, as we know, each line uh, or the statement that we can call the as instruction. Now, if you look at this particular table uh, or uh, the box, right? So here, if see, if you see here, if then there is a condition and that condition is what? Number modulus operator to equal to equal to zero, right? Later colon is provided. And here you have to give four spaces. Then you have to write block of code, right? See, you are following certain rules, right? So if you follow certain rules, what we call that one as syntax. So here we have provided with syntax, right? Now, this print function is called as inbuilt function. Now, this entire thing is what? There are certain set of instructions so that we call that one as program. And that program is also called as what? Code. Writing all these instructions is what? Programming. Now, numerous programs or complex programs together to build any application, we call that one as software. And this particular software used to run the hardware. So these are the various terms that we can see in a particular program. So other than this, there are some other terms. We can see them one by one in the next uh, uh, video classes. Now, what is Python? So basically, Python is what? High level, general purpose, interpreted programming language. We will, uh, we will see what is high level, general purpose and interpreted. So what is high level? As we discussed in the previous slide, high level is, uh, high level means easy to learn, read and write. So the Python programming language is very easy to learn and very uh, easily we can read and write the code. And it is general purpose programming language. So general purpose means you can use the Python for various applications from web development to the machine learning there are various applications where you can use so in that case if we use any programming language for various domains or various applications we call that one as general purpose and interpreted in the previous slide we come to know what actually interpreting means so the entire source code will be turned into machine understandable code line by line right so basically python is high level general purpose and interpreted programming language and also it supports various types of programming paradigms such as structured object oriented and functional programming and one dedicated video will be made on the various uh, programming paradigms and why we have to use python so basically the python has very beautiful features so few we will see here basically it allows to solve the complex problems in a very short time with very few lines of code let us see how the beauty of the python to execute a particular thing by using very few lines of code in a short time for example if you look at the c language to print hello world, how many lines of codes that we have used? One, two, three, four, five, six. And in case of C++, we have used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in case of Java, we have used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But where you come to Python, we have used only one line to print the hello world program, right? So. Like this, it is a simple case, but in other cases also, it requires very uh, few lines of code and it requires very less time to exclude them. And the Python becomes the solution in many areas, right? That means in many applications, simply we can use Python, we can get what we require. And it is easy to learn, 
when we compare with other programming languages. The syntax is very clear and beautiful. And there is a large ecosystem for this Python. There are lots of libraries, frameworks, and it is crash platform. That means it can run on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, etc. And there is, it is open source. So there is a huge community for this. And whenever we get stuck, we can get the help from other active community. And it is a dynamically typed programming language. That means if in case of your C language, you have to declare the variable like int x. So then if you want to use, uh, if you assign or define any value to x, that will be considered to be integer value. But in case of Python, if you give like this x equals to 10, so automatically the Python will consider this variable as integer variable. There is no need to mention int x like this. Or if it is a float, no need to write float x equal to 10.2 like that. Simply you give x equal to 10.2, it consider that one as float value. This is what we call as dynamically typed programming. And coming to the various applications of the Python. So the Python can be used for desktop development, data analysis, game development, software development, rapid prototyping, BA development, image processing, browser automation and chatbots, web scrapping, deep learning, machine learning, IoT, numerical computing, web and internet development, educational advancement and scientific studies and computing. And the Python is not restricted only to these areas. There are many areas also where we can use Python especially. So this is because we can also call the Python is general purpose programming language. Hope you get few insights into the uh, uh, programming languages. In the next video classes, we will be coming up with uh, what are the types of variables and other stuff regarding the Python programming language. Thank you for watching.